what's going on everybody so as most of you know for a while now a lot of pc games that have been coming out have had really crappy keyboard support especially fighting games and a lot of them like street fighter 5 or ultimate marble versus capcom 3 don't let you configure two players so you can do local two players uh you know player versus player so basically uh, there have been some workarounds that some people have done, but I mean, it involves like using two or three different programs and it's it's real messy. Um, so today we are going to be taking a look at a new method that was posted over in the arcade forums and it's really clean. It's a really nice implementation and I'm going to show you guys how to get that working. So the first thing you want to do is go ahead and click on the link in the description and that's going to bring you over here. This is the program here, keyboard 2x input. And all the documentation is here. It's very easy to read, um, but I'm going to walk you through some of this stuff. And uh, before we even get started with this program, as it says here, you need to install this other utility or driver because without this, this other program will not work. So basically, you want to click on this last link right here. That's the easiest way to go. I'm gonna open that up in a new tab. And then here, they're nice enough to make a caveman edition of the instructions. So I'm gonna make it easier on myself and go with that one. And as you can see, it's very easy to follow. Everything has pictures. And this is what we're going to be going through in this video. So the first thing is you're gonna click this link here, download the zip. And then I'm gonna go ahead and open the zip and I'm going to extract it. Let me just get rid of this other stuff that we don't need here. Okay, so I'm gonna open that up and I'm going to extract. There we go. And you don't have to do anything else right now with that. So we can go back over here and this is telling you what to do right here, what I'm doing. So next up, it's telling you to go to the device manager. So I'm gonna to go to the search, type in device. There's device manager there. Now, the next thing it tells you to do is to go to add legacy hardware. But if you don't have anything clicked here, that's not going to appear under action. See, so make sure you click here, like user PC, for example, or any of these things. And now you can go to add legacy hardware. You're going to click next and you're going to select install the hardware that I manually select from a list. Hit next, go down to, I believe it was yeah, system devices. So look for that. There's system devices. Click next and click on have disk. Then browse over to that folder, which is downloaded and extracted. So that's going to be in your downloads folder. I can just go to my recent places here, downloads. There's the folder. I'm going to select X64 because I'm on a 64 bit system. And I'm going to select this .inf file. Open. OK. Next. Next. And always trust. Uh, always trust, trust software. You can check that off and click install. Now we're going to let this finish. It's going to take a minute. And there you go. It's been installed successfully. And if you want to check it, you can go all the way down to Universal Serial Bus Controllers, I believe. Oh, actually, no, it's right here under System Devices. And here it is, Virtual Gamepad Emulation Bus. Now, again, this is everything that was explained there. Here is everything I just did. So if for some reason you want to take a look at this, you can. But that is exactly what we just did. So now that this is installed, we can close this out and we can close this tab out. And we're going to go back over here. Now it tells you to download the actual program. So let's go ahead and do that. And here it is. Again, I'm going to open up my download folder and I'm going to double click on this and I'm going to extract it. I'm just going to drag this one over here. Now you can put this wherever you want. I'm going to put it in my utilities folder. So I'm going to cut. I'm going to go to utilities and I'm going to paste. And there is the program. 
Now, let me explain to you how this works. And again, this is all explained over here, but I'm going to quickly show you the, uh, the important points to know about this. So first of all, mapping that I and I, that's where the magic happens. That's where you map all your controls. So if you open that up, it's pretty straightforward. On the left, you have your keyboard keys and on the right, you have the Xbox buttons. So here's your A button, B button, X button, Y, R, B, L, B. So basically what this program is doing, it is making your keyboard act as an Xbox 360 controller as an X input device. So your keyboard is gonna act as an X input device. So the games are going to be tricked into thinking that you're really using an Xbox 360 controller when you're pressing a keyboard key. So if you look at this example here, when you press right uh, arrow, it's gonna send right on the, on the Xbox 360 controller. When you press left control, it's going to send the A button on the Xbox 360 controller and so on. Here's your right trigger, your left trigger, when you press V and C. So basically all you're doing here is making these keyboard keys whatever you want to accommodate the game, to accommodate the way you want to play the game, right? So you just go ahead and change all of these. You save this file. And when you start up the keyboard to X input GUI.exe, it's going to kick in and then when you start the game, your keyboard is going to act as a controller. Now that's a simple way to do it. And that's for you guys that are just playing games on Windows, no front ends or anything. But if you're like me and you're on hyperspin, I'm gonna show you guys how to integrate this through Rocket Launcher so everything happens automatically. So again, there's many ways of doing this. Another thing you can also do is you can, uh, this is a very small application, it's only two megabytes. So you can literally drop this inside of every single game that you want to apply this to. And then you can make like a batch file or something that starts this up and then the game. And then by default, it's going to use the mapping that I and I within the same directory. But what I, what I like to do is I like to create another folder in there. And I've already done that over here. So I'm going to just drag these two over. I like to create another folder in here called profiles and then I like to create an INI file for each game and then I'll name it the name of the game so in this case it's Ultra Marvel versus Capcom 3 so now if I open that up you can see that this is my configuration for my arcade so D is going to send A on the Xbox C is going to send B A is going to send X Y and etc so this is all set up nicely already for me for two players for my arcade joysticks to act as an Xbox 360 controller. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to integrate this into Rocket Launcher. Now you can also again do this with a batch file and the way to integrate this is you you have to give it uh, the profile as a parameter. So you'll say keyboard to xnpagui.exe space and then the path to the profile, right? But if you have Rocket Launcher like me, let's go ahead and integrate it. Hey guys, I'm just gonna cut in here real quick. I forgot to do this on the first take. When you double click on keyboard to X input GUI, first of all, nothing is going to pop up. I mean, aside from this, just you know, uncheck this, click run, um, and, and this, but normally nothing's gonna pop up. It's just gonna go over here to the tray. And if you click on the tray, you're gonna see a little icon there. But first thing you wanna do is if you get this .NET framework message, go ahead and say yes to download it. And, you know, click here to download. And you could do run, that's fine. And then it's going to download and it's going to run and then it's going to download some more files. It's gonna take a few minutes. So go ahead and let this finish. You're going to need that. Um, but yes, going forward, when you click this icon, if you're doing it manually uh, before you start the game, it, nothing's gonna happen, so don't be freaked out that it's not working. It's gonna go straight over here, and as long as you set up your profile, when you start up the game and you press those keyboard keys, everything's gonna work as it should. So again, just go ahead. I have read the you know, license agreements and all that. Install, let it finish, and then continue on. So let me open that up.
Okay, so I'm gonna go over here to PC games and search for PC, select PC games. I'm gonna go to the modules tab. Now I don't have my module set to auto load. So I'm gonna click the two little arrows right here. Wait for it to load. All right, I'm going to select PC launcher and this third icon from the right, edit specific module settings. I'm gonna arrange it by name, go all the way down. Here is Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3. I'm gonna go to pre and post launch and all of this is going to, going to be blank. So basically what this is, is you're telling Rocket Launcher that prior to launching this game or after launching this game, you wanted to launch another application. Now I tried this one for this specific game. I tried doing a pre-launch and it wasn't working. The game didn't like it and it wasn't, it wasn't launching correctly. So then I tried post launch and that worked. So I'm happy with that. It makes no difference to me. So let's go ahead for this game and we're going to do post launch and we're going to click on the magnifying glass over here. And all we're doing here is we're looking for the program that we just downloaded that keyboard to X input program. So remember that I put it in my utilities and here's keyboard to X input and you want to select keyboard to X input GUI.exe. So now right after it launches this game, it's going to launch the keyboard to X input GUI.exe. And remember, I told you guys that I prefer making profiles per game and you have to specify those as a parameter or well, that's all built in here. So now here you have your, your, uh, pre-launch parameters. If you had specified the program over in pre-launch instead, and here's the post launch parameters. So these will apply to the post launch program. So for the parameters, what you want to do again, is just give it the path of the profile. So I'm going to copy this path up here. I'm going to paste it here. And I'm going to do backslash and then the actual name of the profile and the extension. So umvc3.ini. And now it's going to launch the program with that profile. One more thing you have to do. If you don't do this next step, what happens is when you quit the game, the uh, keyboard to X input program will stay launched and you don't want that. So I created a little script, turned it into an EXE for you guys. I'm going to leave a link to that in the description as well. Simple close keyboard to X input GUI. It's just a simple script that closes the process. So we're going to go over here to post exit. And what that is going to do is when the game exits, it's going to run that simple little script that closes keyboard to X input GUI. All right, so let's go ahead and select that. I've dropped that over in the utilities folder and the same folder keyboard to X input. Here it is. So I'm going to select it and that's it. That is 100% ready. So again, the game will launch followed by keyboard to X input GUI using this parameter, which will load the specific umvc3.ini profile I created. And when I quit the game, it's going to launch the close keyboard to X input GUI.exe, which just closes out the keyboard to X input GUI.exe program. All right. So I know that seems like a lot, but it really isn't. It's pretty simple, straightforward stuff. Believe me, if you see the way that some of these guys have been getting around these problems with these games, it's very complicated and just cumbersome and not very consistent. Um, from my experience anyway. Um, so this is definitely a way better way of doing it. And I'm really glad that this, that this exists. Thanks a lot to the developer uh, of this program, uh, who I can't see here right now, but yeah, really, really good program and, uh, definitely a, a game changer. I can't believe there hasn't been more talk of this, but, uh, yeah, guys, that is going to be it for this video. If you, if this was helpful. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Hit that little bell icon so you stay up to date and I will see you guys on the next one.